Contes Pablinos asks, what do you guys turn to when things aren't going well? All right, Contes Pablinos. First, uh, interesting name. I think uh, the answer is really, it's, it's right here, you know? I mean, it's, it's on the table. Being the smallest potato. Now, the reason why I say being the smallest potato or why potato is the answer is one of the, one of the answers. I like to give you guys multiple different layers and depths of answers. I think the first vertical, first answer I would give you is you want to have a, a advisory board, a circle of people that you trust and know that are like-minded and are most likely going to be entrepreneurial. That you're able to share your, your failures, your, your risks, and really have them see you as you're growing your business or any failures or mistake that you make. You want them to really see how you're doing from the outside. I think a lot of times entrepreneurs are proud and have a lot of ego in being able to be a lone wolf. You know, I hear a lot of entrepreneurs tell me they're a lone wolf. They, uh, they're not, usually not the smallest potato. They want to be the biggest potato. But um, being the smallest potato is also really key because you're able to see, for example, you can't see how you are performing in the business. You think, you, you see it from your reality and your point of view. Being able to see it, have four to five people that you trust, entrepreneurs that are at a higher level or even at the same level as you, and even at uh, potentially not, maybe not as successful as you or maybe not in the same, even business, personal-wise, let's say personal-wise as well, they're able to give you context and give you feedback on your situation and things that you will help you as well. They're able to be, you want people that be direct and transparent with you so they can kick your ass a little bit if let's say you're not, um, if you're not meeting or going or achieving the goals that you set for yourself. I think having a support circle is number one. I think the second thing is really internalizing failures, really internalizing the mistakes that you've made and, and understanding why you made the mistake and understanding how you can prevent it or not make the same mistake a second time. I think people oftentimes, whether per professional, business-wise, or personal, they make mistakes over and over again. And so that's really the definition of insanity. I think it's a, a thing that you want to figure out why you keep making the same mistakes over and over again. If you do it over and over again, then it really means that you just don't care and you don't, it doesn't matter to you. But if people that make the same mistake maybe twice, then they figure out why they're making the same mistake and they adjust their behavior or they develop habits to overcome those things. Or they find the resources or the people that can prevent them from making the same mistake. That's the most important thing. So those are the two uh, things that you can focus on. I mean, just these two things, these are two things that I personally do as well. So use these two things and let me know how things go. Vlad Lebowski asks, B2B and content marketing. Are we overcrowded yet? Vlad, so B2B content marketing in this space, um, I think a lot of people, they just focus on generating uh, content on um, whatever their platform does. I think one of the biggest things that you can do to really increase your uh, B2B positioning and branding is really focusing on looking at partnerships with existing B2B brands that don't directly compete with you, but indirect, uh, com indirect competitors that you have that you can partner up with. I think that's one of the biggest challenges that entrepreneurs and companies have is that they don't look at, they look at the competitors as someone they want to compete against and they try to model and copy instead of most of the time, which is a surprising tactic that most people don't do, but it's so undervalued and underappreciated, but the, you're able to partner up with your competitors to generate creative content that way. The second thing you can do is you can build off uh, case studies, video case studies of your specific successful clients that you've used you. You're able to build content also around the position of the company that they're working in. So for example, if let's say you have a, I'm just guessing, you have a B2B enterprise software company. So for here, let's say you can create content regardless of what B2B uh, company service or product you have, you build it around the position. So for example, a CEO would make a different decision on buying or investing in your product or service than a CFO of a company. So you build it around the position in the company. The fourth thing that you can do is you build around the industry. So you build around the industry, for example, someone in the cleaning industry would see things differently as someone in the legal industry. So you can build it around different positioning and different factors and segmentations. I think the comp competition one I'll dive deeper into for this one because I just, from self-awareness, I think I didn't give you enough context. But what you can do, for example, is let's say you are in the B2B enterprise software space and you are helping people with their conversions, let's say, conversions on their website. 
what you can do is you can look at people that are doing traffic or even doing conversions that increase it but are not directly competing with you you partner up with them and you guys do a joint venture let's say a joint venture on a webinar so webinar and then you guys cross promote each other on that on a, a webinar that educates and also potentially can provide an offer i like educational content where you add value up front and you maybe do a, a consultation afterwards consultations obviously work better if you're in the b2b space versus trying to outright sell a product because you're able to capture more leads by giving a free consultation than you are by doing a product offer because most people will just leave or abandon a product offer so you capture more people at the top of the funnel so i think that's one thing that you do with the competitor wise but look at the industry look at the position and create content around that that's actually more detailed and more segmented i think a lot of companies don't do this but it's something that works extremely well for the private companies that uh, consult with me that i've taught them and implemented for them and also my own internal companies as well so that's what i would do and uh, let me know how things go